Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Lahari Desai and this is a lecture on radiographic interpretation of systemic diseases manifested in the jaws. The learning outcomes would be to describe the radiologic appearances of systemic diseases manifested in the jaws. Now again it is important to bear in mind that based on radiographic characteristics alone it is not possible to determine the underlying systemic disease. Um, the general changes included in the bone can probably give you the suspicion that there could be systemic involvement. So these changes would be a change in size and shape of bone, change in number, size and orientation of trabeculae, altered thickness and density of cortical structures and an increase or decrease in overall bone density. Let's look at some examples starting with hyperparathyroidism. Now the, the bone lesion in hyperparathyroidism is called as a brown tumor. It is not named behind anyone, it is just because of the <coughs> appearance of the bone which appears very brownish in color. There is increased circulating parathyroid hormone, increased bone remodeling, increased mobilization of calcium from the skeleton and increased serum calcium levels and hence there are uh, radiolucent lesions within the jaw which you can see over here in this case there is excessive amount of radiolucency and a defect like a radiolucent defect like appearance within the bone so like we told you just now like i told you it's important to understand that just based on the radiograph you would not be able to understand that there is what type of systemic disorder it is but you could suspect that there is some um systemic involvement and hence there is changes in the bone density. Uh, again with the hyperparathyroidism you could see this uh, salt and pepper appearance of the skull and once the lesion or the disease process is corrected the skull can actually return back to normal or any bone can be returning back to normal after the treatment is done. Hyperpituitarism, um, gigantism or acromegaly, uh, you can see this picture taken from um, one of the sources where you can see that the size of the skeleton itself is very large. The pituitary cella tersica region also appears very large. Rickets and osteomalacia, inadequate serum and extracellular levels of uh, calcium and phosphate are uh, hallmark of this uh, disease. There is defect in the normal activity of metabolites of vitamin uh, D, ex, uh, especially 1,2,5-cholecalciferol, uh, which is required for resorption of calcium in the um, intestine. So rickets, in rickets there is hypoplasia, hypocalcification of teeth, whereas in osteomalacia, which happens in adults, gen generally does not alter the teeth because they are fully developed before the onset of the disease itself. So this is uh, some examples of rickettsial appearance of the teeth which are very hollow, they look like shells and they, because there is less amount of hypo or hypocalcification of the teeth. Also the um, bending of the bones which can be seen in a uh, child who is having uh, rickets. Osteopetrosis, uh, quite rare, but it is also called as marble bone disease. It's an inherited disorder of the bone that results from defect in differentiation and function of osteoclasts. This is abnormal formation of uh, primary skeleton and a general increase in the bone mass. The failure of normal bone remodeling results in dense, fragile bones that are susceptible to fracture and infection. This is an example of sickle cell anemia and thalassemia which gives the appearance of hair on end uh, appearance. This is caused by the uh, superficial surface of the dura uh, being raised and appearing like as though there is hair on the end of the skull and also increased trabecular spaces and wide marrow spaces which is a classical feature of sickle cell anemia or uh, thalassemia. Soft tissue calcifications, uh, we are coming to the last part of the uh, topic now. The learning outcome would be to describe the radiologic appearance of soft tissue calcification in the jaws. This is a diagrammatic representation of locations of selected soft tissue calcifications and ossifications in head and neck region. As you can see, the various areas of calcifications could be within the maxillary sinus, there is an antrolith. Calcified erythromatous plaques uh, that can be seen in the arteries, like the carotid arteries. Calcified lymph nodes in this area, the one which is demarcated are the submandibular uh, lymph nodes. Ossified styloid uh, ligament, or stylohyoid ligament. Phleboliths, which are uh, seen within the uh, veins. 
Xylolids seen within the duct of the salivary uh, gland or within the gland itself. The one that is represented here is in the uh, submandibular salivary gland duct or the submandibular salivary gland itself, which is one of the most commonest salivary uh, xylolith. Next are tonsillolids, uh, which is there within the uh, tonsils. These are uh, generally superimposed over the uh, mandibular ramus area in the uh, panoramic uh, image and uh, also you know the triticaceous uh, cartilage and the thyroid uh, cartilage itself. Uh, dystrophic calcifications due to deposition of calcium source into site of chronic inflammation can lead to soft tissue calcification. These could be due to calcified lymph nodes, dystrophic calcification of tonsil, uh, cysty sarcoids like uh, causing uh, caused by tapeworm infection, arterial calcifications and calcified atherosclerotic plaques. Idiopathic calcifications like xylolids, flebolids, uh, of the vein rhinolids and antrolids and ossification of styloid ligament. Um, this is for example uh, images of carotid artery calcifications uh, which can be seen at the um, below the angle of mandible region uh, superimposing over the hyoid bone bilaterally where you can see that there is calcification of the ca due to arterial calcification of the carotid artery. Also, uh, these well-defined radio opacities which are seen are ectopic calcifications on either side due to tonsilloliths or calcifications present within dystrophic calcifications within the tonsils. So that brings me to the end of this chapter. I have given you examples of different types of uh, uh, radiographic appearances seen in the bone and uh, the diseases that, that we've covered are just few examples. For more uh, information and in-depth reading, I would suggest that you go through the textbook and look through the examples. Uh, and it's very important as I keep on reinforcing and making you, um, making it clear that if the, to understand and to retain radiology, it's very important that you keep looking at images which um, your eyes recognize and um, it's easier for you to um, compare it to something which is abnormal or something which is normal and that's how you retain the information that you, um, and, and that's how you learn and interpret and uh, practice radiology. Uh, thank you very much. If you do still have any doubts, kindly uh, feel free to contact me.